So as a kid growing up, I was a really big fan of the 1982 short film called The Boogeyman, which was based on Stephen King's short story. I remember as a kid going to the video store, the one and only video store that had this movie, and seeing that cover box, and I remember thinking to myself, wow, that's a spooky cover box. Even though it's very subtle, it still at the same time was pretty creepy. I always remembered that whenever I would talk about this movie, I felt like I was the only person that ever saw the movie, because whenever I would bring it up, people would often thought I was talking about the other movie called The Boogeyman that was released in the 1980s. That movie had disappeared from video store shelves and I thought I was never going to hear or see that movie ever again. But in 2020, when the world ended and we were all locked up in our houses, I got lucky and found the movie streaming for free on YouTube. Even though the film is only 30 minutes, it has a lot of good stuff that could be easily expanded and I thought to myself, geez, if I had the cojones to make it myself, I would. I'm not the biggest fan of remakes, but I'm also not opposed to remaking something that's obscure and also just something that has enough meat on its bones for something good. Well, it looks like someone else had the same idea also, but was it any good? I'm like the movie Misfit, and here's my review for The Boogeyman 2023. <music> Boogeyman 2023 is the latest adaptation from one of Stephen King's short stories. But this time around, we follow a family of three, a father and his two daughters, and they recently just lost their mother. But clearly, the writers of this movie were like this. But that's not important right now. The father is a psychiatrist who gets a new walk-in patient, Lester Billings. Lester Billings in this film is played by actor David Dalsmakian. The way Lester Billings is portrayed in this film is very similar to how he was portrayed in the short film. He's experienced every parent's worst nightmare, which is his children dying. He's explaining to the psychiatrist that he had a lot of disbelief when his children were explained that something was after them, and the amount of guilt that he has for not listening to his children, and now he believes whatever was stalking his children is now stalking him too. And at this point of the movie, Lester Billings passes on the curse of the Boogeyman to his psychiatrist and his family, like if the Boogeyman was the flu or something. And that, my friends, is when this film decides to become... That is one big pile of shit. The movie steers very clear from the source material and decides to become every cliche horror movie that we've seen in the past 10 years. Dad doesn't seem to notice anything peculiar is going on, but his teenage daughter, played by actress Sophie Thatcher, who's also cosplaying as Billie Eilish in this film, seems to know what's happening. Our older sister slash hero of the story teams up with her little sister to fight the CGI monster. Our young Billie Eilish cosplay here seems to be the only character in this entire film that cares about the subplot about the mother, because the father and the little sister in the film are literally like this. You know what, who gives a shit? This movie had so much potential to be something really good, even though the source material was not a lot. If this film actually stayed true to the source material, you could have easily broken it up into three acts. A movie about kids being terrified of something? Eh but a movie about parents, the foundation of the family, being terrified of something that they cannot control and cannot explain, that to me is interesting. The first half of the film could have been all about disbelief, Mr. Billings not believing anything that his children are telling him. The second half could have been the death of his kids and all the guilt that he's feeling with it, and the last half of the film could have been all the accusations that were going against him. I was really hoping for this movie to be a psychological horror drama, kind of like the film Jacob's Ladder. We have a parent that's going from psychological trauma and also dealing with the guilt of their child. But man, this movie wastes so much time on a subplot that goes absolutely nowhere. Just like the movie Lights Out, we learned that the boogeyman is scared of lights, so you would think that the characters would do this. Now turn on the goddamn light! Now listen, I know it's very easy for me to stand up here and talk smack about this movie. Now I definitely understand a lot of hard work goes into making movies. Maybe not the writing so much in this particular movie, but a lot of hard work goes in through other departments. Everyone from the locations department to the catering to the transport department all work really hard. But they don't work as hard as the man himself. That's right, I'm talking about the boogeyman. Man, the boogeyman has a very popular look going on right now, so after he's done filming here, he's got a mosey on over to Stranger Things. <laughs> Damn, you hear that? That's the sound of the boogeyman making his dash over to the set of Quiet Place 3. I don't know if I'm just old school, but CGI monsters that just look like this. Okay, okay. What they did with the original short film of What You Don't See is even scarier. Hell, Reverend Kane from Poltergeist 2 was a hundred times scarier than what we got in this movie. Now, as you can tell, this movie left me really... DISAPPOINTED! 
As far as my rating for this movie, I would have said, hey, skip it or stream it only. But the more I think about how this movie had potential and the source material that they had was at their disposal, I am giving The Boogeyman 2023 a this movie and read the book. From that $10, hopefully that you're saving from not paying to go see this movie, I really suggest you get Stephen King's Night Shift book. This has a collection of Stephen King's short stories, which would include The Boogeyman and Children of the Corn. And I would also suggest checking out the 1982 short film The Boogeyman, which you can find it streaming for free on here. So hopefully you stuck around and watched my entire rant. Hopefully I wasn't too harsh. And please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mike the Movie Misfit, and I'll see you at the movies. Frankenstein, the Boogerman. Get more out of life. Go out to a movie.